Do I look alright? Do I look alright? I think I do. Okay. Hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back. I am the Philadelphia Whovian here, and we're going to be talking about another issue that I've had to deal with when it comes to just, you know, people are speak, spoken to about Doctor Who, you know, in work environments or like, you know, on the subway, etc. and so forth. And I'm just going to be addressing some things in case these are things that are either still, um, much debated on, deliberated on, or if this is something that is more universal than I knew it was. And the idea of Doctor Who from Classic Who not being progressive at all. And that is something, I'll be honest, I have no idea how anyone even remotely thinks that argument has any merit or weight. If you do not think Doctor Who in Classic Who, if you think it was not progressive, very well. I shall respect that you think that. This is going to be a video about me personally, subjectively, not objectively, just my own feelings about why I do not believe that's true, and I think Doctor Who from Classic Who had a lot of very strong women in it, and was very good at presentation of women had a lot of opportunities for women and gave us a lot of great females who I think were actually good role models because they were never trying to be role models to begin with. They were just trying to be women who kept buggering on. So where did this all begin with me? Well, it's uh, many times in the con you know, s seeing videos, of course, other videos coming from other people. Maybe it came from that, but it really stemmed from something that had pro happened to me last year around Christmas time. I was talking to um, a fan, a fellow Whovian, and his favorite doctor was the Ninth Doctor. And I said to him, I replied, I said, I understand why you love him, makes sense perfectly. I admit he's not my favorite. Because, and I'll be honest, um, one, I did not always care for the, I did not always like how men were treated or presented in the first season of the show, of Doctor Who, of New Who. Um, between, and I gave him, sorry, getting tongue-tied, specific examples from Rose to the long game, even in Father's Day, sometimes when it came to Mickey as a child, um, but then we have the treatment of Captain Jack and ultimately the way he was treated by the Doctor at the end were abandoned at the end of Parting of the Ways. And how it felt like every single man in Series 1 was never fully allowed to have official companion status and even though he was throughout the series in some way he got bumped off or was considered idiotic for making a mistake at some point. Whereas the females could easily make the mistakes themselves and it was still acceptable. And again I gave specific examples to him of characters who I felt were just, again, and treated a bit intolerably, um, that were male, and were not given second chances. It was kind of a cutthroat treatment of men sometimes, as well as sometimes men were written in a way where they were incompetent. Um, I'm okay with that happening sometimes, but that happened a little bit too frequently, and that even came into the doctor himself, where he some something he could have at some point outsmarted the villain or could have easily used his intellect, like we had from the Seventh Doctor's era, use his intellect to outwit the villain, but it doesn't happen. He's just there until the companion can come in and save him. And I thought it was sometimes... You know, I'm, I'm all about female empowerment. I love being smart. I love being allowed to be geniuses. I really very much am, but not at the expense of belittling or discrediting the intellect of the Doctor and other male characters. I like us men and women being smart together and contributing a lot together at the same time. And that's what I find to be feminism. Not too much imbalance of one or the other where men are higher or women are higher. No, it's got to be an equal balance. It's tricky to achieve that balance, but it's still, I respect it when that balance is always achieved. Which is something I think Classic Who did very well and did a lot of. Uh, there are too many examples to <laughs> in Classic Who to really sit here, but I just... There are so many times women, I felt, were allowed to be very strong and competent in Classic Who... It goes from 1963 to 1989. There are just too many examples. And you're th now you're probably thinking, well, you're not giving any examples because there are just so freaking many. Go watch the show. No, literally, go watch Classic Who and you'll see what I'm talking about. 
sorry. I was I got very heated there for a second. I admit I got heated. Um, and I'll probably try and give some examples later, unless this video is getting too long. So there was that concept for me of just simply I like the idea of men and women being allowed to be strong together and not too much of an imbalance. And I just think that series one did not always understand that balance. And you, okay, before you think of being extreme, you have to try and understand my mindset. Again, my mindset can naturally be different than yours, and yours can naturally be different than mine. But as I said before, sorry for beating you guys over the head with this, but I am a writer. And what you have to understand is when pe if people possibly are ever going to pick up my writing, I don't want ever... M if it, say is that the person who picks up my book is a little boy or, or a teenage boy, I don't want him to see too much of men being weaker than women or men being bumped off the TARDIS or, as we put it in reality TV, bumped off the island because of his flaws when women, that's not always the same with women. Sometimes w women make mistakes, but they are allowed to still be awesome and courageous and yeah, yeah. I want men to, and boys with the environment they're in, to grow up knowing that sometimes I'm going to make a mistake. But that doesn't mean that I have n no second chances. That does not mean my life is going to be completely ruined, or I'm going to be always be viewed as inadequate. I don't want that mentality to ever happen. I know you're thinking in Series 2, Mickey was allowed to become a lot better in same with Series 4, but for me, I'm not... Mickey became better not because the Doctor fully accepted him, it's actually the reverse. He got better by getting away from them, ultimately. But that's a, probably another, another whole another topic. So now you, that's where the foundations of that began. And I was speaking to this guy, and I said, Hey, I, you know, I see why you love the Ninth Doctor, but I'm not crazy about his era. era. I always say error when I mean era. But I'm not crazy about his era too much because of this. And he had nothing to say back to it until... Um, I started mentioning Classic Who, and then he quickly, he quickly said, oh, God, yeah, series one, uh, first Doctor, Ian was absolutely awful, like, where he, where he said, he said this one time where he was like, to Barbara and to Susan, oh, no, I can do this because I'm a man, like, I'm strong, and so I'm gonna save the day because I'm a man, and I did not say anything back to that because I, um, at first I did not say anything back because I did not, have not seen all of the first Doctor's stories. But then I thought about it, and I was like, I, th that whole concept, he reinforced why I'm not a fan of the Ninth Doctor's era with that. Because when he was saying that, I, because I then eventually found out when I confronted him later, as I thought about it, because at first I just let him say that, because I'm like, of course he's entitled to his feelings, as I am entitled to mine. But I said, at the end, I said, I love Ian. Then I found out he had no idea what episode that he said that Ian said that. He had no reference. He could not tell me what episode it was. He could not tell me the context of what was in the situation that Ian said. All I've got is a guy pulling something out of context to defend why he does not like someone when I always gave a context and references in exact episodes to why I was not crazy about something else. Was he attacking... Um, Ian, for the sake of trying to look smart because, or because he felt defensive about me simply not favoring the Ninth Doctor, or was he showing something that was different and more vicious? And that was, again, something, and when I say this, I am not attacking Ninth Doctor fans. I'm not talk attacking Ninth Doctor fans. I'm simply calling out something I've seen a pattern with the Ninth Doctor fans who use their love of the Ninth Doctor to belittle other Doctors as an excuse of he is the perfect male, perfect Doctor, and they belittle other Doctors for not living up to him. Again, this is not talking about Ninth Doctor fans, no. I'm talking about Ninth Doctor fans who I've seen have repeated um, behavior or thoughts about how when it comes to when they use the Ninth Doctor as an excuse of belittling other males or other doctors. And which is, they've adapted this extremity of mentality that something happened, I feel like, in the Ninth Doctor era, where you belittle other men or you bump or men, you discredit men quickly 
because of one thing they said or did. There was an intolerance to men to the point where a man it makes this one wrong thing. He his whole personality is defined by that one wrong thing rather than it being he, he said one wrong thing, but he does all these other right things to make up for the wrong he says sometimes. He reinforced my problem I had with the Ninth Doctor, but he also kind of shown a what I, uh, attitude I felt towards classic who in general, where men say one thing over here or one thing over here, and therefore they are terrible in general. There is a harshness to the to how men are perceived. If they make one flaw, they get bumped off the TARDIS, or they get discredited immediately, and all the good they do disappears. We men and women are just as much the sum of our successes as we are the sum of our failures. As long as our successes and our virtues heavily outweigh our flaws, as long as they heavily outweigh our flaws, these failures should not be the only thing that defines us. But also, sometimes in Classic Who, when some, a character said, this is men's work, or like I do this because I'm a man, oftentimes when I look in context like the moon base, what I've seen when like you know, Ben said to Polly, this is men's work, and Jamie reinforced that concept, it was Kit, the story was written by Kit Petler, who actually was a feminist, who wrote that to show so men could hear how they sound. And Polly came along anyway, and Polly was one of the main heroes of that story. So actually, Kit Peddler was ha having the men say this to show how, no, this is what women are have to face, but how they face it when they head on, as long as you understand this is not the way it always is. And it's actually, he was using that, that scene to show how women actually are strong versus how they are not strong. Sorry if I did not phrase that correctly. But go and watch the special features to the moon base and you see Anique Wills speak about Kit Petler. He was using that incident to actually have Polly rise above that incident and show she was just as important as men in that situation and could be ju just as capable and capable and strong as a man. And Ben and Jamie still are heroic characters. They just said the wrong thing in that incident or said the indelicate or put something indelicately in that incident. But that does not make up their entire personality. They are still awesome characters. See what I'm saying? And Classic Who is full from Barbara, Vicky, Polly, Zoe, um... Am I forgetting else? Liz Shaw, um, Sarah Jane Smith, Leela to the maximum. Leela is a badass. But also Romanas, gorgeous Romanas. And then we get Perry, again Ace, and many other female companions I'm missing. Nisa, these are strong women who are sometimes even smarter than a doctor in some ways at some points, or they contribute a lot to the dynamic of the TARDIS team that shows how vital they are to the team. Oh, I forgot Joe Grant. I love you, Joe. I love you. We have these strong women, and we have sm strong supporting females. The president in Frontier in Space, the woman in Seeds of Death, she was very good as well. Many women I in these older women in Seeds of Doom, the old bat old woman in Seeds of Doom, and then in the Stones of Blood, and we have some very good female villains in this classic Who as well, who are very powerful. You know what? This concept, I think that classic Who, people look at through a filter, and that filter is where if a man, if anything is male-dominated, or the man is allowed to be right, or if the man says one wrong thing, he gets demoted immediately. It's too harsh of a mentality. And that's what I think it is. People just think that anything that is male-oriented is belittling the female, or is keeping her in a bad place, or is just downgrading her. That's not the case. I don't think that it's the case at all. And I'm just going to stop here because this video has gotten too long. There are more things I wanted to say. I hope it was clear. I'm sorry if it wasn't. My bad. But um, I might do another video later on about this if I see this video and I look at it and I learn what I could have done better to help phrase it better. But I just feel like when it came to my interaction with that one guy, and I've had other interactions like that, where... I said something about how I looked at how men were treated and I didn't always think it was the best, but then I love Classic Who, and they find some way to use Classic Who as an example to how women were being, not being respected, but I think all along there were strong women who were there. It's just the idea of, unless the woman is the lead, we don't 
look at women as being strong or we don't look at her as being enough of an example of a strong woman. I do not need the doctor, I do not need the doctor to be a female character to feel like females were there all along being awesome and being represented and representing me in a damn good way. Many women in Classic Who are my guiding star and they are awesome. Again, I hope that was clear. Sorry if that was not. And again, I not attacking Ninth Doctor fans, simply attacking those people who use the Doctors and knew who at some point as an excuse to be intolerant or be kind of just, again, brutal to judging men in general. The same would go with women. Uh, if this were a female situation, I would be the sa arguing the same things about women. And now you do not use women's flaws over here to ignore all the good she's done. Only when the flaws are heavily outweigh the virtues do I not like a female or a male. But when the virtues are, are heavily outweighing the flaws, and the flaws are very minute things, like the flaws of the character don't lead to anybody getting killed or in danger, then I will easily love that person. Again, flaws, I'm okay with flawed character, just not a destructive character or a character that is toxic to be around because they, they lead to problems happening that endangers others. Hope any of that was clear. If not, let me know in the comment section. I'll do another video later to try and rectify how unclear I probably was. So thank you so much, guys. You were awesome. Again, really, guys, you were great. Bye.